This is my Compact Desk Pro. I've had this computer for a while now, but I recently acquired the matching keyboard and mouse. These peripherals, however, are filthy and definitely need a good clean. The machine itself isn't that clean either, so today I'm going to take it upon myself to fully restore this machine back to its original glory. First of all, I'm going to pull the computer completely apart and restore its internals to factory original. It's pretty original this computer for the most part, but it just needs a bit of a clean. Compact computers, especially from the late 90s, are really easy to take apart and don't require any tools. Here you can see me lifting up the front where all the drives live. It's almost like the hood of a car, but a bit different. I'll also just unplug all the drives now, so we can have easier access to the motherboard. This is a very small unit, so you can see the sea of IDE cables that lives within this machine. I'm glad SATA exists, because there's no way you could cable manage a modern computer with cables like that. This machine has a 600 MHz Pentium 3 inside of it. And it's just using passive cooling, so no fans here. Yeah, I've used this system a lot actually, and it keeps pretty well cooled, you know? All the expansion for this machine lives on this one riser card, so I'll go ahead and pull that out too. This thing has two PCI and one ISA bus connector. Yeah, I must say this machine definitely has a very good design to it. It's easy to pull apart and doesn't require any tools. Here, look, that's all you need to do to take the power supply out. Very well planned. Now I'm just going to remove these last few cables and now, are you ready for this? We can just slide the motherboard right out. No unscrewing here, sorry. Only toolless disassembly. I didn't realise how dusty this thing was. Wow! But just wait until I get compressed air onto this. It's going to look brand new. But first I'll take this RAM out. Well, I said compressed air would work a charm, and was I wrong? No. This thing looks immaculate in person. I also used a brush, just to get some remaining sticky dirt out of there. But yeah, otherwise it looks perfect. The great thing with passive cooling on CPUs is that it's really easy to clean. You don't need to pull off fans or really pull apart anything. It's quite simple. Just get a brush in there and go for it. With something like a ram stick, your best bet for cleaning is something like a paintbrush because it just works. There's a few ways you can go about cleaning IDE cables. Some people will just submerge them in water, and that works pretty well. But these ones actually aren't too dirty, because they were never really exposed to a fan. So, I'm just going to use the brush on them, because it seems to work perfect. And they look good as new, they just have some light dust on them. We've pretty much cleaned all the internals of the computer now. So now, I'm just going to reassemble it and turn my attention to the outside of the case. There we go. Now, we're just left without the top cover, which I'm going to clean. My best bet is probably just using a magic sponge. This will remove pretty much all of the little scuffs, because that's all there really is in terms of dirt, and will just make the computer look really good. So yeah, magic sponge. Then I'll just dry it off with some paper towel. Alrighty. Now we can put the cover back on the computer and call the computer done. 
So yeah. And if you're wondering why I left the little Windows activation sticker and that other one underneath, it's because that's what was there originally. And even though it's all scratched and stuff, I'd rather keep it as close to factory original as possible. Next up is the mouse. This thing is really dirty. I'm going to start by using my magic sponge and just getting the bulk of all this grime off of it. And then I'll give it a deeper clean. Now I'm going to completely disassemble the mouse and it only requires two screws taken out of the bottom. If only designs were this simple these days. These days, a mouse is made so you can't get into it. But look at this, two screws and it's completely apart. Take notes, computer designers. Now I'm gonna clean both sides of the mouse using a garden hose. There we go, it looks pretty much brand new, don't you reckon? Now that the mouse is drying, I can turn my attention to the final component, the keyboard. So I've taken out the six screws on the back of the keyboard. Now we can lift off the back. This thing is really filthy on the outside, so it'll be interesting to see how filthy it is on the inside too. Hey, what do you know? It's actually not that bad. But oh my gosh! Look at all those screws! If I have to unscrew all of those, it'll be very annoying. Well, as my luck would have it, I had to take out all of those screws. Why would they do that? Like, I get that it's by design, but still, you think they could have got away with a few less screws. Anyway, here we go. We can finally lift up the back plate now. And yeah, there we go. That's the whole keyboard pretty much disassembled. I'm not gonna take the keycaps off cause I'm simply just gonna rinse this whole component under the water. So yeah, I'll give it a good chance to dry though. Here we go. I'm gonna get rid of 20 years worth of grime on this keyboard. Gosh, how do keyboards end up so dirty? Seriously, people. Be sterile around the keyboard. Now that the keyboard's been washed, I think it looks pretty good, you know? Albeit it's a bit yellowed. Maybe I'll retro bright it in the future. But I reckon it looks really good, yeah. Next up, I'm gonna clean this conductive mat thing within the keyboard. This keyboard is a rubber dome keyboard. And what that basically means is whenever you press a key, a graphite pad gets pushed onto this. What that basically does is closes the circuit and tells the computer you've pressed the key. This mat is a very cost reduced version of what you need to bridge that conductivity. This is a standard for rubber dome keyboards. Sometimes when people restore things, they don't actually clean the cables. Me, I reckon this is a very important step. Because if you're going to take the time to clean and or retrobright something, you may as well do the job right. And cleaning the cables is something that I deem essential if you want to do the job right. So yeah, clean your cables. Alright. So now, it's time to reassemble the mouse. That looks excellent. By the time I'd reassembled the mouse, the keyboard was now dry. So it's time to reassemble that too. See all of these screws? I have to put all of those just to hold the keyboard in. Crazy. 
That took me way longer than it should have. I really don't like this design. Anyway, here we go. That last screw is put in. Gosh, I am sick of this. Anyway, now we can put on the back cover of the keyboard. And this involves six more screws. Man, they really screwed up with this design. All jokes aside, that's the keyboard restoration complete. So now we can put everything together and fire it up. And there we go, it's all back together. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the keyboard's a bit yellowed, but it looks all right. But it's very clean, and that's the most important part. So yeah, let's fire it up. This computer still has the original mechanical hard drive in it, so I've just skipped ahead to when it loaded finally. And yeah, our keyboard and mouse seem to be working fine. So I'd call this a success overall. Well, that's about it for today, a successful restoration. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.